Well, so many exciting things, right? Step up, step up into the into all that we have uh, for this next little time. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to point you to the screens. We've got a quick little highlight video that's just going to show you some snippets of all of the stuff that we do from all of the ages, all of the ministries. So would you look to the screens as we have a look at that and then I'll invite Andy to come and join us. Thank you. You search our hearts, we trust you completely. You lay out our paths and you are first and the last, oh Lord, you know us deeply. We sing your I think that deserves a clap, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's just wonderful to see everything that's happened, the lives that have been changed, how we, God calls us together, draws us together as, as one so that we might be on his work here. Uh, the kids are leaving because it is Discovery Bible Study. I just realized that's what I was meant to say. Uh, they are not just leaving in disgust. If you're here as uh, years seven or eight, then you're welcome to go and join in a Bible study. There's sugar, there's fun, there's friends out there. So if you want to do that, you're welcome to stay in here, of course, uh, but feel free to go out there. Let me add my welcome to Kylie's. My name is Andy Pierce. Uh, I, it is my privilege to serve as the pastor here at Warmbra Community Church. Um, as Kylie said, today is Step Up Sunday, uh, where we honor and celebrate the kids going up uh, into a different year. The, the parents celebrate that the kids are back at school and they can have a bit of uh, downtime. And really, I want to honor, uh, echo, uh, honor the, the leaders and the staff who serve in our next generation ministries. It's just incredible. I don't think I've seen a church where the, the kids' ministry is thriving and the over 55s uh, ministry is thriving and, uh, uh, and the, everything comes together. Yeah, it's just, it's so good. Um, this morning I want us to take a step back from our normal series and take a moment just to fix our eyes on the horizon that, that we believe that God is calling us to. Uh, look at what God is doing in us and through us and explore the mission and the vision that we believe that God has given us all here at Warrenburg Community Church. So let's pray and then uh, we'll, we'll do that. Let's pray. Father, we do praise you for your goodness to us. Praise you that we can put up slideshows and we can tell stories of your goodness to us here at Warrenburg Community Church. And I just pray that you would excite us for the year ahead, that we would indeed step up, that we would l embrace what you've given to us here uh, and your goodness and grace. And pray, Lord, that as we step up, we might step out of our comfort zone, that we might lean on you and, uh, and depend on you to change us and to use us for your glory. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to start by reading a verse of Scripture and telling you about three people. Here's the verse of Scripture. It is Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3. 17. Uh, here's three uh, people that I want to introduce to you, three members of the Warmbra family. Uh, first, I want us to meet Daniel. Daniel is 20, uh, 23, 23 years old, and he has just graduated with a Bachelor of Teaching from ACU. And he's working out what he wants to do next. Uh, Daniel has grown up in a Jesus-centered home, going to Warmbra Community Church. He loves Jesus. He was a Warmbra kid. He was a Warmbra youth, and now he's a Warmbra young adult. 
And as he stands at this crossroads of his life, he's asking, does he teach at South Coast? Or does he teach at Rocco High? Uh, does he follow an itch to go and work with indigenous people out in Kalgoorlie? Or does he do something completely unrelated to his degree? And because of his time at Warmbra, Daniel doesn't just love Jesus. He doesn't just know Jesus. He doesn't just know about Jesus. Daniel deeply trusts Jesus. And as he stands at this crossroad, this uh, mix of anxiety and indecision is overridden by his trust in Jesus. And as he stands there, Colossians 3.17 keeps rattling around in his heart. Whatever you do, with it, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And he knows that despite how he's feeling, that Jesus is in control. Uh, he knows that Jesus is with him. And he knows that it, it doesn't matter what he does, whether he works at South Coast, whether he works at Rock Ohio, whether he goes to Kalgoorlie, or whether he does something completely different. It doesn't matter what he does. It matters who he does it for. See, Daniel trusts that he doesn't need to look at his resume. He doesn't need to look at the acceptance of his peers to know that God loves him. He just needs to look at the cross. He just needs to look at Calvary. Well, this is Brenda. Uh, Brenda's got three uh, grown-up kids. Uh, the last one flew the nest four years ago. And Brenda loves Warmbra Community Church. Uh, the community that ha it has given her, the opportunities she's had to grow in love and faith in Jesus. Uh, she's at a time in her life where the mortgage is paid off and she works part-time. And because the mortgage is paid off and because she only works part-time, she's got some extra time on her hands. Well, a friend in her life group has given her a bookmark one of those beautiful bookmarks, tasteful bookmark, uh, with Colossians 3.17. It says, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And she reads this bookmark, and she knows that she really wants to make the most of this extra time for Jesus. Now, Brenda makes a mean fruit platter, and she can bake a sausage roll with the best of them. And someone had suggested that she serve on the morning team at Toddler Jam. Well, one, uh, she goes and does that, and one Toddler Jam morning, Brenda offers a sausage roll to Sarah, a new mum. And as she offers this amazing sausage roll uh, to Sarah, Sarah bursts into tears. Now, Brenda knows it's not the sausage roll because her sausage rolls are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that Sarah is just struggling. She's struggling with being a new mum. She's struggling with uh, the inflation rates that are going up. She's just struggling with life. And over time at Toddler Jam, uh, Brenda makes a friendship with Sarah. She meets her for coffee. She shares some parenting hacks. She babysits to give Sarah a bit of space. Uh, one day Sarah asks Brenda, why are you so good to me? Why are you doing this? And Brenda replies, because I know God loves me and loves you. Well, one thing led to another, and Sarah comes to church. She hears the gospel, and over time, her and her family become Christians. And they're now serving at Warmbra, in Warmbra Kids. This is Pete. Uh, Pete is a plasterer in Rockingham. He's a dad of two sons. He's followed Jesus since his late teens. He's always gone to church, but never really felt like plastering had any value in God's kingdom. He knew that serving on the rosters had value. He knew that giving to church had value. He knew that serving in the kids' church had value. But never plastering, unless the pastor's kid uh, put their foot through a wall. Then he had value. Uh, Pete moved to Rockingham six years ago and has been part of the community church and attends the men's pie nights. At one pie night... Uh, he, wasn't invited, he was invited on a short-term overseas mission trip to Cambodia. 
uh, on the mission trip. He did lots of plastering. In fact, he spent two weeks where he did everything, every waking moment he did, he did it for Jesus. And at the end of the mission trip, he's thinking, wow, I love being a missionary. Well, it was on the last night of the mission trip that Peter's talking to one of the team and shares how much he'd enjoyed the trip and how he'd loved doing so much for Jesus in such a short space of time. And as the words came out of his mouth, the penny dropped and Pete realized that he'd always been a missionary for Jesus and always will be a missionary for Jesus. Uh, So on the flight home, uh, he looked at his life through the lens of being a missionary. Being a missionary for Jesus in Rockingham. He saw being a father as a call to be intentional to teach his kids to trust and follow Jesus. He saw for the first time that every customer that he plastered for as someone who needed to know Jesus and someone who he could display mercy and justice and the generosity of God to. He saw every job that he did, an opportunity to model godly character, to do good work, to show grace and love, so that the people that he met would be shaped by his love for Jesus. And he saw his skills as a valuable means to show love and compassion to the poor and the marginalized in this city. Three amazing people. Sadly, they're all fictional. (laughs) Pete, Brenda, and Daniel, they're all made up. Uh, But their lives, their lives are echoed in so many people in this room uh, this morning. They are echoes of the hearts and the intentionality that I see across our church and a church that is wonderful to be a part of. Uh, Since accepting the invite to be pastor of Warmbrook Community Church uh, nine months ago, it is clear that God is doing something extraordinary in this place and through this church to impact the city of Rockingham. It's just good to be here. I love being here. Uh, My wife, Kim, and I, my family love being here. We love seeing a rich, loving community of diverse people. Uh, We love seeing a hunger for the Word of God, to see the Word taught faithfully and well. We love seeing this joy of serving Jesus. We love seeing a heart for our city. We love seeing a desire to grow in faith and love and trust in Jesus. Uh, We love seeing the womb to two ministry. When we visited, someone said, oh, there's no over 55s there. Uh, We've come here, and that is not true. As I said, I've never seen a church where the kids' ministry and the over 55s ministry is flourishing like it is here. I love seeing the entrepreneurial spirit that is in so many people here at church to try stuff for Jesus, to step out of a comfort zone for Jesus, to to invest in the mission of Jesus. And I love seeing people trusting Jesus on the mountaintops, in those good moments, attributing all to Jesus, but also in the valleys, in those hard moments. It's just a glorious thing. And we should be encouraged as we see those stories and their lives and the lives around us. Well, back in August, we did a sermon series. It really was one of the highlights for me uh, of 2023. We did a sermon series called More Than a Sunday. And um, we did, uh, is, if you put the other slide on you, it was a, uh, there was a, a, a moment in that sermon series, uh, I think it was on week one, where we all put red dots on the places where we spend most of our time. And I know for many that was... That was a a real uh, watershed moment. People have come up to me and said, I never realized that I had a front line for God. I never realized the time that I spent in this place I could spend for God. And uh, as we did that, there was uh, one sister was weeping because she'd been praying for Christians to be intentionally in a place in Rockingham for years. And now those red dots were appearing on, on that place. And two things became apparent after that sermon series. Uh, one, firstly, that Warmbrook Community Church is a community that is more than a Sunday. It is more than a Sunday. And secondly, uh, the second thing that became apparent was that 
God used this teaching series, particularly that exercise, to show us all that God has given each of us a mission field in his world that goes beyond the walls of this church and goes into our city in an extraordinary way. And I really feel God is giving us this vision as a church, uh, that our church is more than a Sunday. Ewan, would you put the previous slide back up, the more than a Sunday slide? Thank you. Uh, more than a Sunday. Really, I do, really do think that that is, if we had to put a headline for our church, that would, be the, that would be the headline, that we are more than a Sunday. What does that look like? What is the vision of that? Well, it is this. Every person living every moment of every day intentionally for Jesus. Every person here living every moment of every day intentionally for Jesus. I love this quote from Paul Tripp. Uh, it says this, A few of us will radically change because of a single moment of resolve. For most of us, our existence takes place in 10,000 little moments of every day. So true, isn't it? So true that our life is shaped by lots of little moments. And if we take each of those little moments and do them intentionally for Jesus, then we will be different people. Our church would be a different church and our world would be a different place. And so it is my prayer that each of us will see every moment of every day as an opportunity to do it for Jesus. Uh, now that mindset is both challenging and it is liberating. It's uh, challenging because it's hard to adopt that mindset, isn't it? Uh, to break out of having our Christian and church silos and our everything else silos. Very easy to kind of go, okay, Sunday is my church day. Sunday is when I do my Christian thing. Sunday is when I get my Jesus fix and then go into our life uh, the rest of the week as we always have. That is the challenge. It is also liberating though, it's wonderfully liberating and joy invoking uh, because it helps us to see God's truth, God's cosmic truth, that each and every follower of Jesus has been uniquely wired and placed for God's mission in his world. Every follower of Jesus, uniquely wired adequately gifted and perfectly placed for the mission of Jesus here in Rocking. And that is you, not the person next to you. That is you. We have all been adequately and wonderfully gifted to contribute to the mission of Jesus, even plasterers. And what blows my mind is that God does not need us. God does not need us on his mission. He could do his thing any way he wanted, but he chooses you and me. And that just blows my mind to, to do life with him and to do life for him. And when we get that mindset, it, it liberates us and fills us with joy as we realize that the Christian life is not just about believing stuff and learning stuff and doing stuff on a Sunday. Not just about believing, learning and doing. And often that mindset, um, I know that I've been in churches like that before, often that mindset can leave us burned out and leave us resentful about a Sunday church. Supremely, though, we are called to move from that believing, learning, doing mindset to a treasuring and trusting Jesus mindset. Treasuring and trusting Jesus. Treasuring Jesus with every moment. Trusting Jesus with every moment of our lives. That is what we're called to. To not only believe Jesus, but to trust Jesus. To not only believe that Jesus is good, but trust him that he is good, even when everything in you is saying this is not good. This is not good. And that really is what we're praying for each of us here, that we would treasure and trust Jesus. So how are we going to continue and grow this mindset? To grow this mindset of every person taking every moment of every day and using it intentionally for Jesus. Um, if you're anything like me, you kind of see those vision statements, you go, right, I'm in, what do I need to do? Uh, well, I've got three things, uh, three simple values, three simple 
kind of avenues for call to action that I'd love us, love to call us all to this morning as we start 2024. The three things are this. Firstly, I'd love us to embrace community. Embrace community. Um, I, I often meet new people who come here and I say, oh, what, do you, what do you see is good about this church? And people often comment on the strength of the community here. I want to say at the start that our community is strong. It is amazing. And many people will testify to that. But it is only as strong as the community that, that you and I embrace and engage in. It is only as strong as you and me uh, going, I'm going to con contribute to that. I'm going to model that community. Uh, we've all heard, um, and we've all probably been guilty of it, of saying, I wish church was more like this. We need to model the community that we want to be part of into existence, uh, not whinge it into existence. A community uh, of God's people where we love one another selflessly, sacrificially and purposefully. Where we prioritize uh, Jesus' community. We put others above ourselves. Uh, we live out the parable of the Good Samaritan and we love our neighbors as ourselves. And we also inspire one another. Uh, I know that my Christian life has been massively shaped by the people of God, by seeing uh, the people of God uh, doing things and inspiring me and showing me how to do life and teaching me how to do life. And so we engage in community, we embrace community so that we would inspire others and be inspired ourselves. God has given us three brilliant gifts. He's given us his word, his spirit, and his people. And so I want to call us to embrace community here. Don't be the person who just slips out on a Sunday every morning and, and doesn't embrace community. Join a life group. Meet with God's people. See this as a family that God is calling you to, not an event that you attend. Second thing, pursue Jesus. Pursue Jesus. If, uh, as we do everything in 2024 and our plates are incredibly full, I know, I want to call us to prioritize, to grow in our knowledge and love of Jesus, to be consistent in the opportunities to open the Bible. One of the things that we are closed hand on here at Warnborough Community Church is that the Bible is the living word of God given to us to grow us and to make us more like Christ as the Spirit grabs hold of the work, word and works in us individually and communally. And so uh, consistency in the opportunities to open the Bible of learning the life that Jesus has called us to so that we would treasure and trust Jesus and surrender everything to Jesus. Uh, you will know if you've been a Christian any length of time or if you are just starting out as a Christian or if you're uh, uh, not yet a Christian, that following Jesus is about surrendering our lives to Jesus. And that will increase with our years. And so we need to pursue Jesus with everything that we are so that we would not just know about Jesus, that we would not just do stuff that Jesus calls us to, but we would surrender to Jesus, trust Jesus, and treasure Jesus above everything else. Well, third thing that I want us to call us to do this morning is share the gospel. Share the gospel. And I know many of us will be thinking, when I hear the word share the gospel, you're thinking placard on a street corner um, uh, with believe in Jesus or something on it. Uh, there was a guy, when I worked in London, there was a guy uh, who stood on the street corner that shouted out, are you a sinner or, or are you a winner? Are you a sinner? Are you? And he had this loud hailer, a big... Placard. That's what I kind of think of. Now, I'm not when I say share the gospel, I'm not saying that. Although there will be some people who feel called to do that, and that is a courageous and good thing. But when I say share the gospel, I say live lives that are shaped by the gospel. Speak the gospel with the opportunities that come uh, when we live lives shaped by the gospel. Fund others to share the gospel and take, who will take the gospel to places that we can't go or aren't prepared to go. Invite people to opportunities to hear the gospel. So encouraging to see so many of us 
inviting people to Christmas Eve to hear the news of Jesus that Christmas brings. Uh, to be authentic and honest in answering people's questions as they come up, as we live out lives shaped by the gospel. Now there are a lot of organized opportunities to do that. And I encourage us just to make the most of those. Lots of opportunities for our friends to hear the gospel, for us to be reminded of the gospel across all our ages and stages at our church. Uh, we have got lots going on here. Here's a, just a montage of some of the stuff that's happening. There's, uh, we have gatherings, we've got groups, we've got events, we've got outreach and evangelistic initiatives. Uh, just an example of that, the um, Cat Money course, just a brilliant way for uh, us to invite our friends in Rockingham to come and connect with a Christian charity who want to uh, help reduce debt and reduce poverty in our city. Great initiatives. But what place do they have in every, uh, all of us living every moment of every day intentionally for Jesus? Well, I've been wrestling with this, and I think this is why we do what we do, why we do church, why we do this organized church. It is so that the organized church and the organized events would equip us, inspire us, and mobilize us for the organic moments of life. Next slide, please, you. That's really the goal of why we do what we do. So we cannot, as a church, do, e do everything for all of us. Uh, and uh, as a pastor, you always hear the ideas and, and you always hear that we should do this, uh, get the, we should do this email, and we should do that. But this is what we're going for, that the, organic, the organized events equip us for the organic moments of life. The reason we gather to open God's word, proclaim God's praise is so that we would go out on a Monday, filled with the joy of Jesus and the gospel on our lips. Uh, the reason we do uh, kids' church is so that we can invite kids along, uh, ki kids along to this, so that we can engage with our community in those organic moments. Teaching so that our minds would be shaped for life in Jesus. Community so that we would uh, know how to be selfless and sacrificial. Uh, to our mates that don't know Jesus, so that we would have an invitational culture and we would have a missional mindset as we go off into the city. So that we would be discipled and dis so that we would be discipled ourselves, so that we can disciple others for the whole of life. So that we call everyone into what we believe the best life there is to live every moment of every day intentionally for Jesus. Here's another quote that I love. It's from a friend of mine called Chi. Uh, he said this, The whole of life is the classroom for discipleship. Every moment of every day is the customized curriculum that God has put together to make us more like Jesus and share the gospel. Good, isn't it? Really, really good. The whole of life is a customized classroom. And so we want to embrace that. We don't want to just say, Oh, church is over here and life is over there and don't let them meet. And if one imposed impedes on the other, then you'll be in trouble. We really want to embrace that, the life that God has given us, the people that God has made us. And so I want to call us to, to step up, uh, to step up into this calling that God has given to us as a church. How can we do that? I'd love you to do three things. I'd love you to pray for this mission. Pray for each other. Pray for the staff. Pray for the leaders. Pray for the mission of this church. Psalm 127 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. So please pray to the Lord of the harvest for a bumper crop. Uh, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will raise up more workers for the harvest. Pray that, uh, to the Lord of the harvest for an extraordinary move of the Spirit in us and through us, so that there would be rejoicing in heaven because our friends, our family, our work colleagues, our neighbors would be saved. They would hear the gospel and that the gospel would go out into our neighborhoods, into our networks, and into the nations through us. So be praying for that. Second thing I want to call us to is to serve on this mission. Uh, serve on this mission. Unless the, Lord, uh, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. Uh, we don't want to labor in vain, but the Lord does need laborers. 
Uh, it's very easy in a church our size to, to kind of slip in and slip out, to think that I'm not known and I'm not needed. Uh, you are known, you are loved, you are prayed for, and each and every one of us is needed on the mission of God that he has called us to. We are uniquely wired, adequately gifted, and perfectly placed uh, to do God's work. And with that comes uh, great joy. Great joy. So consider how you might serve on this mission. There is a ton of stuff to do here at church. There is a bunch of, uh, there is as many ideas as there are brains in this room of how we might uh, take the news of Jesus out into the world. So serve, give, practically contribute to that mission. And uh, with that comes deep relationships with each other and with God. We grow deeper uh, with each other and with God. So serve on the mission. Thirdly and finally, uh, give to the mission. Uh, financially invest in it. Um, it costs us $650,000 to sustain the mission, the, the ministry here at Warnbrook Community Church. Uh, that is just to turn the lights on. That is to feed and house our staff and to do what we normally do. Uh, it's been 650000 for a couple of years uh, now and our staffing level is, is, is very modest for the size of our church and the size of our ministry. Um, in 2023, um, we received uh, just shy of that 650000 We received $608,000 in giving. That is uh, down on previous years. We've been consistent in hitting uh, that budget consistently. Um, but we, we managed to... Can you put the next slide up, please, you? Um, consistently, um, we've been uh, consistently receiving, hitting budget. But last year, we didn't uh, hit budget. We hit 608000 so uh, $42,000 short of, of what we needed. But God was very kind. Um, we didn't have a senior pastor for a year. We had a couple of staff vacancies. And so our wage w bill was down. So uh, we were able to, to sustain what we're doing. In 2024, we're going to need, we've set a budget of 650000 again. Uh, the temptation is, of course, to, is to downsize the ministry and, and to match uh, what we actually got last year. And so uh, that really was a real temptation. At one point, we had that in the deck and working out where we might cut and where we might downsize. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Uh, I think it's achievable. It's achievable because of the size of our church and because of the number of people in our church family who are not currently giving. Um, we, have, we have got, we have had bumper record attendance in the last couple of months. Uh, it's been incredible that we've had to put more seats out this morning. We had to put more seats out last week. Our, our attendance has increased by about 20%. But our giving has not. So I, I want to call us just to give. If you're, if you're not giving and you can give, to start giving, just get on the pitch. It is, uh, I think it was Wesley that said, the last thing to be converted was a man's wallet. I know that very well. And so uh, just get, get on the pitch uh, with our giving. Give something if you're giving nothing. Um, uh, Jesus calls us to give out of, not to give out of abundance, but to give out of worship and sacrifice. There are hard ways to worship Jesus, but giving, financial, financially giving and investing in the work is not one of them. We don't want to just sustain uh, the ministry here. Uh, we want to grow it. Uh, I'd love to see another service in the afternoon. I'd love to see a, a church, another church planted in due time. I would love to see uh, more toddler jam, more initiatives, more, uh, more of us working on the mission of God, but we all need to chip in and get around this and back it uh, uh, to, to make a sacrifice of worship uh, for the Lord in that. Go on three holidays instead of four. Uh, have takeaway uh, of three nights instead of five. <laughs> Do something. Give, give the Lord a sacrifice of worship and invest our money in the eternal and glorious work of God. So let me call us to, st uh, to step up into a life that is more than a Sunday. Step up into living every moment of every day intentionally 
for Jesus because it is a wonderful way to live. In fact, the best way to live. Uh, there is a QR code. There is a QR code here. Um, if you want, uh, we're going to leave that up. We'll leave that up during communion. So if you want to click on that, there is ways to, there is links to sign up, to give, to join a life group. So you can click on that with your phone during communion. But before we take communion as uh, a united people of God, let us pray. Father, we do thank you and praise you for all that you are doing in us and through us as a church. We are just flabbergasted by your grace to us and the mercy that you show us. Uh, Father, if ever we doubt that, I pray, Lord, that we would look at the cross of Jesus. I pray for every single person here who is, who is uniquely wired, who is adequately gifted and perfectly placed for your mission that you have called us to here in Rockingham. And I pray for a move of your spirit to, to just assure us of your grace and love that we uh, don't work to earn our salvation, to prove our worth or to uh, win your love. But we embrace this life, we embrace this mission because we are loved, because we are valued, because you have given us everything in your Son to give us a life of joy and purpose and freedom. And so we pray, Lord, that we would know that with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.